Okay, so welcome back everybody. Welcome to the newcomers. If you were not there for the first talk, so quick information. Entrance here, exit there. Uh, safety, you just go through, like we're in front. Safest room of us them. Um, if, if you have any questions, suggestions, because this is your dev room, even if you help organize it, do come to us. We're mostly friendly. Uh, if you have friends that are, didn't manage to get up at whatever AM and fight the rain to get here, it's all live streamed, including the slides. We double check, it does work. So please do share. Uh, now, one of my most favorite <laughs> exciting topic well, we'll see what XR is. I don't want to give any spoiler. Uh, but Rabimba, as you can see also from his uh, magnificent T-shirt, uh, Mozilla tech speaker and supporter of Mozilla overall. So what, what is all those words, decentralized social web XR? Please. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about virtual reality, a little bit about augmented reality, very little bit, also a little bit about IPFS. So without further ado, uh, who am I? So the ego slide. So uh, I'm a student at uh, Rice University. Uh, I'm doing my PhD there. And uh, I have also worked with uh, Mozilla as an intern and also a volunteer. I'm also a Mozilla tech speaker. I've also worked in IBM in a little bit in blockchain uh, as part of my internships. I am also a Google developer expert in web technologies. So that's uh, kind of in a nutshell, who am I? And let's delve into what is AR, VR, or MR, or in generally XR. Uh, how many of you have at least tried one form of these technologies, maybe in mobile or Awesome. So as you can see, this is a pretty old picture. Uh, that's even Sutherland. Uh, that was what he envisioned VR was. That's like whole room setup. And from there, we have uh, progressed to something like this and this. <coughs> so how can we create content in VR? How can we actually bring this in web browser? And how can you create content in that? I'm going to briefly touch over how can you create them. And then we'll go to understand how these can be decentralized. So first, the things we are going to talk about is the frameworks and how you can create them. As I can see, most of you have at least played with it. Uh, so the two things I will talk about is A-frame and uh, how you can use A-Frame to create WebVR. Uh, any of you have tried playing with WebVR or A-Frame? OK. So that gives me a chance to actually show how you can actually create VR content. Uh, so before you start, uh, what are the devices right now that supports WebVR or uh, WebXR? So these are the devices kind of the your into, uh, uh, how, where you consume the content. So you see there is a like range of device here from like three dollar uh, Google cardboard which you can also print or uh, build at home uh, to very uh, expensive oculus quest or HTC vibe and all these things now the experience in all of them are not exactly similar so when you are building content you also have to take into account where you are building it or who are your audience now why web why not build in something like Unity or like any gaming engine which supports, uh, with, uh, which supports VR? So the primary uh, logic here is that web is open. It's instant. Uh, if I create something today right now in the stage and I share a URL with you, you can just tweet it or share with uh, your friends that, OK, see, this is a uh, nice, cool example. And they can just open their mobile open it in their browser, and if it supports, and we'll see if it supports or not, and they can immediately get into that content. They don't have to download anything from any Play Store or App Store, or they don't have to wait for the content to load. Now, where is it supported right now? So these are the devices where you can play with where we are uh, right now today. So Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge, Chromium, uh, Chrome for Android, uh, Oculus Camelot, Oculus browser, Samsung Internet, and something's not here, which is the Firefox Reality Browser, uh, which right now is running here. All these support uh, WebVR out of the box. Now, one of the questions is, like, where is Safari? 
Uh, Safari support right now is not completely there. We have mobile polyfill, which kind of makes uh, it work, but the performance is not yet uh, comparable to the uh, native performance of these uh, browsers. But Apple is on board, so you eventually will get support for Safari. Now, what is A-Frame? Uh, how many of you have uh, at least uh, heard and played with 3Js? Quite a few. So 3Js is kind of like graphics library where you can build uh, cool graphics demos or anything animation with that. A-Frame is on, built on 3Js, so it makes uh, building those things much easier for a free app perspective. How easy? So for our first Hello World example in VR, uh, these are like all the lines, hopefully you can read it. These are all the lines you need to create a basic VR scene. Let me show you what I mean by basic VR scene. So this is in code pen. This is the exact same code. Uh, so what I have here is something called a scene. And inside that, I have four, five elements, which is a sphere, cube, cylinder and the sky element and this is closed there is nothing else here what it produces for me is something like this so this is a vr scene right now running from the browser if i press on this and if my browser supports uh, a vr uh, scene then uh, it will just transport me to the device so if i had an oculus uh, uh, Go, uh, the portable one, or the normal Oculus Quest, I would have plugged into my uh, laptop and I would have been into this scene. To make this scene, all I needed was this five lines of code. Now, let's see what happens if I, since this is a web. Let's make it way bigger. Okay, where did it go? <laughs> okay, so it was so big, it covered the whole scene. So uh, this is how you can build like very simple VR scenes. Uh, there is a big, uh, uh, like very good documentation in A-Frame website. I'm not gonna go into that. I just wanted to show you how easy uh, it is to build VR scenes using A-Frame. Now, since this is is a web page and this is essentially a static web page, uh, you can use uh, your regular tools like uh, Firefox Jeff tools or Chrome uh, inspect tools to actually inspect and also edit these. right from the browser, and it will work. So this is essentially uh, the whole scene. So this is the scene, this is the sphere, and if I change something here, that just like any web page. So that's how easy it is to create a VR scene. Now, since this is essentially a website, this works very well with all of the web technologies you have already been playing around. So D3JS, Vue.js, React, Angular, everything works with it pretty well. Uh, that, what that gives you, that gives you something to build, oh, that gives you something where you can have a D3 chart, load it in A-frame, uh, get a JSON uh, data from somewhere, load it inside, and just play around with it. I think I have time to at least show how it looks like. So there's a huge community uh, in A-frame. You just, just go to the blog, and you can see a lot of cool, interesting demos. And it's very good documented. So uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this. But I'm going to show you what you can do with it. So these are a few demos which uh, um, various communities and uh, Mozilla team and also Google has a website and Google experiments where they have created. So this is a painting uh, application in HTML where you can just paint something and uh, you can share the URL and anybody can actually go inside. So if you have play, play Google Tilt Brush, uh, this is kind of the HTML version of that. Uh, you can 
use 360-degree videos, or what you can do with D3. Now, what I want to talk today mostly about how you can use this technology for social interaction. So this is a project called Mo uh, Mozilla Hubs, uh, the social hub. Uh, what it gives you is that you have a shared space uh, connected by WebRTC where all of you can go inside and talk with each other. You can literally use it for, for uh, meetings. With that, I'm going to try a demo. Uh, <laughs> can you try to open this in your mobile right now? So when you open it, it should give you something like this. And if it loads eventually, precisely for this reason, I have recorded demos. Um, but why? One last try. It is loading. Hopefully. Well, the beauty of this is that you don't need me. If more than one of you have joined the room, you literally should be able to see others' avatars moving around in your mobiles. I could have shown it better if it loaded here. Meanwhile, I'll go on show what it should look like. So this is kind of a recorded demo. So this is how it should look like inside the scene. You can play around with the ducks, or you can look uh, around and see each other. Yeah. So essentially, you can have the same experience in XR. You can have the same experience in XR, and uh, you can have these on you and move around and kind of see like this. Now comes the other part of the talk, the decentralization. Um, before the recorded one, I would try to actually do the demo. So, okay. Where did that go? I have no idea why I cannot reach the top of the screen, which I need to. For, for those who never tried VR, um, you will have the headset of the, of the booth, of the TEDx booth, and you may build in the Let me try it once more. Yes. So what I'm now trying to do is that, can we have this same experience in IPFS? Uh, how many of you uh, have heard about IPFS? Awesome. Awesome. So what I'm trying to do is that IPFS is an uh, interplanetary file system. So essentially, uh, your data is not, going, uh, not coming from any server. It is coming from my machine. And also, when I publish it in IPFS and others see it, it also comes from some of their machines in basic sense. So it is decentralized. It's not coming from any server. Uh, when I publish any static file, so when I was showing you the demo for hubs, it is essentially an HTML, uh, the client side, it's a Node.js uh, application. 
and it's connecting to each other using WebRTC. So now I have a very simple demo uh, using a, a frame shared component that is using the same technology as WebRTC to connect to uh, VR scenes. And can we use this WebRTC in IPFS? So this is a demo. This is running inside IPFS. Uh, as you can see, I have the code. Uh, you will see the code at the end of the talk. So can we use this and communicate? So what I'm doing is that this and this is going to try to communicate with each other using WebRTC from IPFS. If it fails, I can have the recording. Yes, it did not fail. Now can you see it? So I sent something, and here I have the hello world. Um, and if I say something here, So as you can see, we can uh, communicate with two IPFS uh, static sites in U, uh, using WebRTC. And uh, can we integrate this with something in A-frame? And that has to be a static site. So what I essentially will try to do is use an A-frame component called a frame shared component. So what this component gives you, like immediately out of the box, is something like this. So this is a share, uh, though, so this whole component, when you just add it and uh, initialize it, it gives you a chatting room using WebRTC, uh, where you can, uh, if you move to other room and somebody connects with this, uh, uh, URL, you should be able to communicate with each other using voice. Uh, this is running in Glitch, and it doesn't have any server component. And the code is essentially, so the only thing you need, the minimal setup, is this template and the script, So which essentially is this. So this is the room setup, and these are all building up the uh, hmm, models inside the scene. And then if you use it uh, in published in IPFS and use uh, what I showed, you can actually communicate using IPFS uh, and it is decentralized and it's not coming from any server. Right, right now it's coming from Glitch. Oh, also, what you can do, so this was the recorded demo. Uh, the, also, the, some other things you can do is that since uh, if you don't have a server component and you are just uh, creating static files, for example, like this, so this is the painting in real world, uh, kind of the A frame, uh, sorry, the A painter, you have XR painter. Uh, you can go to the Mozilla Hacks uh, website and you have very good write-up how you can use this. So you can also publish, publish these in any IPFS site and it will work. So web is the ideal platform for making AR and VR component and today I'm going to argue that not only web, you can actually use these components in a decentralized way. So. If you want to learn more about these and all the resources, this is the slide you should take a picture of. Uh, all the codes I have shown are in GitHub, and this slide is also in GitHub, and everything uh, you can try it at uh, your home. If you have any queries or questions or anything later to talk about, you can uh, ping me in Twitter or in my email address. This talk will also be, the talk is available right now in this link that is essentially a GitHub page. And thanks to everyone uh, in Mozilla Reality uh, team and a lot of other people whose demos I have used for uh, this uh, talk today. Thank you. And if you have any question, reach out to me and do come to the demos. This is awesome demo you will be able to see, which I cannot cover in 25 minutes. Thank you.
So um, you will be able to chat with Ramin Ba right after, but if you already have questions, I know you have questions because it's kind of based on how many hands were raised and not raised on trying VR and 3GS, you do have questions. So who is the first? And a question ends with a question mark, not an opinion, that's for after. So, because I'll have silly questions if you don't have. Ah. Uh, thank you for the uh, presentation. Um, how will the, um, the speed um, of, um, the, how, how will the performance be um, down the line with, especially with um, web browsers now taking more and more RAM? Um, how do you see that scale with um, yeah, um, AR and uh, yeah, augmented reality? So uh, the question is, uh, how is the performance and uh, with uh, large components and everything running in mobile browser or maybe desktop browser, uh, like what are the performance caveats? Uh, I think that's the question. Uh, so right now, uh, if you're running it in desktop, uh, the only performance caveat is you need a good machine to run it in the Oculus browser. Uh, so sorry, the Oculus Quest. So the requirement is from graphics perspective, not that much into uh, the browser perspective. Right now we have reached a, uh, like, uh, a position where you can run it comfortably in mobile phones. So this, the demo I showed, which is essentially this one, uh, this is running in a, a like Pixel XL. Uh, the, it's a Pixel phone, like a three years old phone, and it's running in a browser and in an experimental browser that crashes all the time. But even then, you can see it's pretty fluid. So you can just see it, and it works pretty well. So uh, you can definitely build uh, on Excel performance on that, and. Uh, VR performance, you can, like, it's already people are building industry applications on that. Thank you. Next question. Uh, quick, quick remark while you're thinking about the next question. A lot of the performance is actually not really executing in the browser, but how dedicated software like Unity and Unreal are packaging the assets, for example. A lot of it, like, in terms of uh, optimizing texture, uh, mip maps, all this is done before it's actually shipped to the browser. So don't compare directly, let's say, Unity app to a, a WebXR app and think it's not as performant because there is a lot of pre-processing basically happening up front. So next question, I don't see any hand. Maybe I'm just tired. Um, do you think uh, the web will migrate I mean, we'll have a future with the VR will be uh, the regular platform for the web. Uh, uh, so the question is, uh, do I think the web will be like a good fit for uh, this scenario? Will it be like regular? Uh, will can it be used in regular uh, performance uh, things? I think it, it is a, like great platform. And uh, let me go back and show why. So. This is like a, a real example. Uh, this is a web page uh, where you can just load a 360 degree video inside the page. And imagine uh, um, going to uh, BBC's page or Amnesty International and you hear about a bombing or hear about something uh, in your desktop browser or maybe mobile, you just click on the link. And if you have a browser, you just get into an immersive experience. So that's exactly what Google has been um, experimenting with in the search, where you search by some name of animal, maybe panda, and it will give you an option that you can get the panda right now in the room from mobile browser and like see, okay, this is the animal I'm searching for. So I think this is a like, great example. Okay, last question, and after that, we'll have to defrag, because you guys are not together and we have a lot of people waiting. So last question. Otherwise, it will be after, but it's probably a nice question that anybody else want to hear, so 